Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current fights of 3rd November 2023. So first we are going to see the Delhi edition of the Hindu and we are going to list out which are the topics relevant from our examination and we are going to think about even perspectives. So this thinking about perspectives will help you to improve your thought process and that thought process will be absolutely important for your answer writing okay for your main answers and even for your essay yes this thinking process will be very important that will be never taught in anywhere so it's my challenge okay so you have to know the perspectives so in which dimensions you can think about that in which dimensions you can connect this topic because nowadays you should not think only in one subject point of view you have to interconnect the subjects so that we are going to teach in this session of this Rathod's IS Academy, Current Fights. And later on, we are going to see detailed notes of this today's Current Fights. And there we are also collecting some articles from Indian Express as well. So which has not been covered in Hindu. If it is covered in Indian Express, we are going to see that as well. So that you will be getting the comprehensive analysis of two newspapers. And one more thing is, if you want to get the notes of this class, so you can join the telegram channel a link is given in the description box so that you can get the notes of this class so there is no need of making any notes clear so this is the first front page of the hindu november 3rd so the first topic here it is about one committee so in yesterday's newspaper we saw different parliamentary committees right so again moitra other opposition mps walk out of ethics committee meeting so here you have to see what this is ethics committee. So you have to open your Lakshmi Khan and you have to see this chapter that is parliamentary committees. So in that parliamentary committees you have to see now this is ethics committee. So who are the members? So members are from only Lok Sabha or both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Who is the chairman of this ethics committee? And what are the functions of this ethics committee? Because in 2019, there was question regarding this parliamentary committees in your prelims point of view. So because of this, yes, you can get question regarding this parliamentary committees this year in your prelims for sure. And next important thing here is, you can also get question regarding means like, so what is the relevance? What is the relevance of this parliamentary committees? So what is the issue here? The issue is in the procedure of passage of bill. So in the procedure of passage of bill. So bill. So this is a bill, right? So this bill will be placed in first house. And after debate discussion voting if this bill passed in this first house that will be placed in second house so again ddv that is debate discussion voting will be happening in the second house and if this bill is passed then it will be placed before president so if president giving the sign then this bill will going to become an act right so in this whenever this bill which is placed in the houses so here presiding officer he can send that bill to parliamentary committees for better scrutiny and now the issue is so most of the bills have passed in the house without parliamentary committee scrutiny so it is one challenge and because of this yes there is a high chance of getting question regarding relevance of this parliamentary committees okay so in this point of view also you can think about this article and this image you can see here it is about stubble burning in outskirts of Amritsar in Punjab region so recently we discussed one report like so there is decreasing of stubble burning about 50 percentage in this Punjab Haryana region but what is happening that's the same thing is happening so whatever the steps taken by the government and recently supreme court also said that so there should be stringent punishment should be given 
if anyone who is going for stable burning. So judiciary is taking steps and even state government and central government are taking steps to control this stubble burning because stubble burning is one important cause of bad air quality in Delhi region. Okay, despite of all those steps taken by central government, central level, national government and judiciary, so there is no use that I can see. So let me know what is your opinion. And if you are from anyone from Punjab and Haryana region, so let me know what are the reasons of the stubble burning exactly from farmer's perspective. Okay, from farmer's perspective, because if you are local community, then you will be understanding the issue more better than outsiders. So because of this, I asked you if you are belonging to this Punjab Haryana region, let me know what are the exact reasons for this stubble burning from farmer's point of view. So even though a lot of steps taken by government, like central government, state government, so why there is no behavioral change is seen in the farmers. So this article that we can connect from your ethics and environment point of view, okay, and also you can connect from ethics point of view. Ethics means why no behavioral change. Okay, so this topic will come under your chapter called as attitude. Okay, so why there is no behavioral change in the farmers regarding this stubble burning or you can also think like how can we bring change. So if you are a district magistrate, so how can you control this? Okay, so in this way you can think this topic. So there is interconnection between environment and ecology and ethics there. And if you move on, <coughs> there are other important articles. So first one is Supreme Court seeks data on donations through electoral bonds reserves verdict on scheme. Yes, electoral bond scheme is in use because a lot of a number of petitions which filed in Supreme Court to see the constitutionality of this electoral bond scheme, whether it is constitutionally valid or not, because there is no transparency. There is anonymity and there is increase of corruption and even we are not decreasing the black money. And the government is knowing the details but not opposition party. So here because of this it is also infringing right to information. Right, so because of all these things now Supreme Court asking for the details regarding who donated to the political parties under this electoral bond scheme. So here you have to see what is the meaning of electoral bonds and what is this electoral bond scheme and what are the challenges. Okay, so this topic is important from both your prelims and also from your mains. So from prelims and mains point of view, so this article is at most important. And next one is Kerala government moves Supreme Court against Governor over pending bills. Yes, <clears throat> one problem faced by the southern states is pending of bills. So, I think day before yesterday we discussed about this Tamil Nadu state. Tamil Nadu government showing concern regarding pending of bills before Governor and now it is state of Kerala. The so same thing which is happening in this Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So here you have to focus on what are the discretionary powers. What are the discretionary powers of governor and even you can think about what are the constitutional provisions regarding the powers and functions of governor. So those will be very important. Okay, clear? So these are two important articles. And you can move on. In the city page, I found nothing. And there are very little number of articles important from your examination point of view. So you will be getting enough time to prepare for other GS today. I think so. So tell me how many hours are you preparing? Because uh, prelims is very much near. It is just around 200 days. So how are you preparing for prelims? So whether you are going in the right track or not, let me know, okay? So that if there is any help can I do from my side, I will be doing that help as well. 
so you can leave this spotlight uh, you can leave this metro plus and directly you can move on to your editorial page so in this editorial page yesterday we discussed one article that is about pmi that is purchasing manager index in the month of october so what happened there is somewhat decreased compared to that of earlier month so here you have to see some factor some important facts regarding this purchasing managers index that's it and this topic is about israel palestine issue so number of times we talked about this topic so there is no need of much seeing this topic and next topic it is about biosphere resource it is very important so here every year on november 3rd we are celebrating this world biosphere reserve day so first of all i wish you a very happy world biosphere day so on this day uh, i want to visit one biosphere okay so but i don't know what my kids will do but i want to visit one biosphere today at least one biosphere in every year so that is my motto but i don't know what will happen okay so if you are staying nearby any biosphere reserve so go to any biosphere reserve and just enjoy the nature and think about how you are spoiling the nature okay and if you are going to become indian forest officer yes you will be having a lot of responsibility to save your environment and forest so just sit for 10 minutes and close your eyes and think about how can we save our environment and biodiversity that's it okay so please let me know how many of you are going to nearby biosphere reserve or nearby at least if you are not going to any biosphere reserve like nearby national park so even if it is not possible to visit any national park just go to nearby park okay and enjoy the nature because enjoying the nature is very very important because without nature we will be not having the sustenance of life right so from our side we have to help for rejuvenation of nature because we as a humans doing lot of destroy for our environment so if you want to get our needs for example if you want to have electricity if you want to lead life with a luxury cars or if you are moving by on vehicles or if you are having acs etc so yes we are releasing emissions into atmosphere that is having negative impact on bio diversity right so go to a nearby park and let's uh, do some activities there and just enjoy just for 10 minutes have a walk have a run okay so here this article which is talking about biosphere reserves they are evolving as pockets of hope so here you have to know about what is this biosphere and what are the functions of this biosphere reserve and how many biosphere reserves are there in india so those facts will be very important okay so this article says that we are we are having we are creating negative impact on environment why because so we are removing this lush greenery bushes etc and we are going for uh, converting of forest lands into agricultural lands and we are focusing on tourism and because of this tourism we are focusing on development projects or infrastructure projects such that what happened the biodiversity in that area will be affected and it's one is we are using this single use plastic and especially plastic water bottles so that will be also causing a lot of harm and about 80 percentage of all tourism places in coastal areas they will be having the plastic pollution okay plastic bottles plastic etc so in this context yes we as a human so we need to take some steps to conserve our biosphere reserves so this is the thing which mainly said in this article and we have to see this topic it is very very important and this is the second anniversary of world biosphere day okay that's it in this opinion page there is one article like is united nations toothless in ending wars so yes we have united nation security council yes so what is the important aim of this united nation security council to ensure peace and harmony to ensure peace and harmony right 
so actually we came up with this united nations after world war 2 so after world war so world war 2 ended in year 1945 and after this ending of world war 2 we came up with this united nations so in this united nations we have united nations security council right united nations security council and it is focusing on especially maintenance of peace and security peace and harmony right but if you see what is happening across the world so we know that russia ukraine conflict is going on and still it is going on yes or no and now what happened hamas hamas they are attacking israel and we can see there was humanitarian crisis in this israel palestine so what happened so even though you are having multilateral institution united nations security council but recently resolution came up by this Jordan which has not been accepted or abstained by a lot of countries even India abstain voting yes no then here what is the relevance of this United Nations Security Council now so it is toothless or not so think about this and let me know your opinion in the comment box clear and in text and context, there is one article, it is regarding understanding worker productivity. So, it is talking about work should be done for 70 hours, whether it is practically possible or not. So, especially if you are a software engineer or if you are a working professional, always we will be, we will be searching for when we are going to get the leave and when we are going to have off, right? Yes or no? So, whether you will be performing like 70 hours in a week or not? No, practically no. So, here Narayana Murthy, he said that if you, they are working like 70 hours a week, okay, then we can be the developed country like Japan, Germany. So, here he said, uh, cited examples like Japan and Germany. They are examples of countries that grew because their citizen works harder for longer hours to rebuild their nation aftermath of second world war so after second world war so these countries had been affected a lot like germany and uh, japan and because of the citizens they worked hard so finally now they are developed nations so in the same way here we can also work from 70 hours in a week so that we can do what we want so this is the thing which said by narana muthi and i think it is not practically possible because even i will be searching for when will be when i will be getting holiday like that okay so let me know your opinion regarding whether the 70 hours of work will be happens or not okay and here you can see productivity in a more sophisticated usage it is an attribute not of time but skill so human capital which is like education training nutrition health etc which enhances the ability of labor to become more productive and I want to add one more idea. So, whether it is a controversy or not, I don't know. But it is my personal idea. But I want to share this. So, at that time, so if you see after World War II, that means around 1945, from 1945 onwards. So, if you see the scientific uh, development or technology development, so they do not have much development. So, everything that should be done by humans, like they were, they need to work hard. But now in this 21st century, we have a lot of technology like we are using big data analytics we are using uh, artificial intelligence chat gpt so by using this what happened so the work that can be done in 10 hours that now reduce it to one hour so why we have to work for 70 hours a week now okay so this is my idea i don't know whether it is a controversy or not so think on this lines as well and let me know whether i'm wrong or right okay yeah now let us move on In this news page also I found nothing much important and you can leave this assembly polls. And in this world page I saw there is one small article which is relevant. That is climate funding fall shows action stalling says United Nations. So international funding that is international funding for 
climate resilience in developing countries slumped. So there is decreasing of climate finance. So already we discussed about this topic called as climate finance number of times. So now you can revise that topic. Okay. And in this business page, there is nothing much important. Okay. So that's all. So these are the articles which are relevant. So there is nothing much uh, which is important, which is important from our UPSC point of view in our today's newspaper. So that you will be getting enough time to prepare for other topics. Okay. So don't spend much time on irrelevant articles. They will fetch nothing. So now let us see the notes and I also collected articles from Indian Express so that you will be not missing any article. Okay, so first article it is why new tax filing data shows better compliance and upward mobility in higher income slabs. So actually recently there is one report released by income tax that is income tax return statistics. So this report which published by income tax department itself. So income tax department released this report called as income tax return statistics. Okay, so here you have to know some facts regarding what is this income tax. So income tax is an example of direct tax. It is nothing but the annual income. Okay, so for example, this so and so person is earning this so and so income. So on this income, he have to pay tax to government. This is called as income tax. So in the same way, this is an organization or this is a factory. Okay, so it is generating so and so money. So on this money, this organization will be paying tax to government. And this is called as corporate tax. So based on the income of uh, individual, so whenever he is paying tax to the government and that tax is called as income tax. So income tax is example of direct tax. So whenever income of that person is increasing day by day, then he need to pay more, more and more tax to government. So what is this income tax return? So income tax return is nothing but it is a document. For example, if you are using any bank account, so you will be getting statement, right? So in the statement, if it is in document form, that is called as income tax returns. So income tax return is a document that is used to convey the details regarding individual earning in a financial year and how much amount of the taxes that paid by that so and so person to income tax department. So that is called as income tax return. So what are the major takeaways from the recent income tax return statistics? So it said that there is increased overall tax filings. So overall tax filings had been increased. Okay. So here total of 6.75 crore taxpayers, they submitted income tax returns. And it is around 5.6 percentage of increase. Okay. So there is 5.6 percentage of increase that is seen in the people who are filing this income tax returns. It also led to evolution of taxpayer base. So the number of taxpayers, they has progressively increased now in the recent years. Okay, 5.87 crore in 2018-19 to 6.75 crore in 2021 to 2022. And income trends, if you are talking about income trends, the department which highlighted a migration of individual taxpayers towards higher income brackets over the years according to CBDT. So according to CBDT, it says that yes, there is migration of individual taxpayers towards higher income brackets is happening. So here we have different slabs of income tax. So if uh, income is increasing, then they will be moving from low tax slabs to higher tax slabs. So this is the thing which mainly said. And here you have to see some facts regarding CBDT. So that is Central Board of Direct Taxes. So here this central board of direct taxes, it is a statutory authority. It is very, very important. So statutory authority means nothing but under any act which is came up. Okay, so which has been established under any act that is called as statutory authority. So it was mainly came under the Central Board of Revenue Act of 1963. So under the Central Board of Revenue Act of 1963, so this CBDT came into picture. And under which department and functions? 
it comes under this department of revenue ministry of finance and even it plays a very important role by contributing crucial insights for shaping direct tax policies and strategies in india and even it will help fulfill overseeing the implementation and execution of direct tax regulations via income tax department and this mainly led by chairman and consisting of about six members in the cb dt okay so these are the some relevant facts that you have to remember because nowadays upsc is also asking facts based question from your current affairs so that facts you will be not seeing in your newspaper directly you have to do some research for that so you here here you can follow this current affairs analysis so that you can get some facts regarding that so and so organization is that clear so here the title is why marital status why marital status it is a criteria for women to avail surrogacy under law delhi high court to center so marital status means nothing but married or unmarried Marital status is nothing but married or unmarried. So here you have to focus on what is a surrogacy. Surrogacy is very very important from your polity and Indian society point of view. So here nowadays because of lifestyle changes, because of lifestyle changes, the reproductive rate had been decreased in women. For example, you are suffering from PCOS, endometriosis. uterine cancer or cervical cancer everything what not so what happened because of this after getting married even after 2 to 3 years also women they are not conceiving so this is the reality so because of this yes they can go for the option called as surrogacy surrogacy is nothing but renting the womb okay so recently why it is in news due to delhi high court questioned delhi high court questioned the association of marital status so delhi high court question association of marital status with eligibility for surrogacy under the surrogacy regulation act of 2021 okay so it it mainly question about the surrogacy regulation act of 2021 because under this act there is one section section 21 s so under this surrogacy act this section 21 s says that only only married women with husband they can go for surrogacy so it says that no surrogacy for indian widows so indian widows no surrogacy or female divorcees so they will be not going for surrogacy right who are between 35 and 45 years of age so what is the meaning of surrogacy surrogacy means in short and sweet renting of womb Surrogacy is an arrangement in which a woman agrees to carry and give birth to a child on behalf of another person or a couple. So, if you want, if you want babies, but you are not uh, having the baby, so if you are, if you are having some problems, you want to get a baby. So, for example, if you are uh, approaching me like uh, to carry the child, yes, if I am accepting, that is called as surrogacy. Okay, a surrogate sometimes also called as gestational carrier. So she will be carrying the baby for nine months, and after the delivery, so that baby will be given to the so and so person, and in return they will be getting some just very very little amount for the expenses in the hospital. And the man and the woman who conceives, carries, and gives birth to a child for another person or a couple, so that will be intended parent or parents. Surrogacy Regulation Act of twenty twenty one. So under this uh, act, a woman who is widow. or a divorcee between the age of 35 to 45 years or a couple defined as legally married women and men they can avail for the surrogacy if they have a medical condition necessitating this option so if there is any medical option like they can't go for pregnancy then only they can go for this surrogacy under this surrogacy surrogacy act So the intended couple, they shall be a legally married. They should be legally married, and they should be present between the age of 
26 to 55 years of age okay and they should not have any previous biological adopted and surrogated child so they should not have any biological or adopted child so they can go for the surrogacy so even the surrogacy also bans commercial surrogacy okay so in the surrogacy normally we are having two types of surrogacy first one is altruistic surrogacy and second one is commercial surrogacy so commercial surrogacy is for monetary benefits so i will be accepting that uh, i will give a birth to the child okay but i need so and so money 25 lakhs 30 lakhs like that that will come to the commercial surrogacy so this commercial surrogacy had been banned in india and the law which also allows only altruistic surrogacy where no money exchange hands and where the surrogate mother is genetically related to those seeking a child and even the famous case of surrogacy which is in news is uh, do you know about the famous film actress Nayantara? She also went for surrogacy. Okay. So, there was a lot of controversy regarding the kids of uh, Nayantara. So, you have to see that as well so that you can understand what is the issue in India. Clear? And now, let us see some important things like what are the changes which made recently by the Supreme Court. So, government came up with a notification in March 2023 and amended the law which is banning the use of donor gametes. Okay, so we should not take any donor gametes. So, if you want to have the child, so you have to give your own gametes. Okay, it said that intending couples, they have to use their own gametes for the surrogacy. And this petition filed the Supreme Court challenging amendment as a violation of women's right to parenthood. Okay. So, why? Why? Because uh, if you see, if you want to go for reproduction, so we need to have the good reproductive health of men and women. Okay, so we need to have the good health of women and women. Right, so if men is having the less sperm count. So, the problem here now there is decreasing of uh, uh, reproductive, that means uh, total fertility rate in India is because of lifestyle changes. So, whenever men, they are working in hot conditions like in steel industries, wherever there is temperature high and if you are placing laptop, a uh, lot of time on your laps. Okay, so because of the heat, what happened? So, the sperm count will be decreasing and sometimes it will become to zero. So, if there is no sperm count means there is no male gamete. So, if there is no male gamete, how this fusion fertilizer will happen, right? So, because of this, if any man who is having less amount of sperm or so zero sperm count, so if this decision of Supreme Court said that we can use only the only the couple's gamut but not the donor gamut, means it will be violation of women's right to mother parenthood. So, women will be not give not become the pregnant, right? And this one is the court interpreted the requirement for the child to be genetically related and being related to the husband okay so it is regarding the sperm count so these are some important things which mainly said by this honorable supreme court and next topic is scar t cell therapy so this article is at most important because it is a one important solution for the cancer therapy so this article is important from your science and technology which comes in a gs paper 3 so, if you see context, it says that, it says that the drugs regulator, it says the drugs regulator has granted market authorization. So they came up with this market authorization to CAR T cell therapy, okay. It is CAR T cell therapy for cancer patients with B cell lymphomas. So, whenever they are not responding to the standard chemotherapy, we can go for CAR T cell therapy. So, what is CAR T? So, CAR T it is a revolutionary therapy. So, which is focusing on modification of immune cells and they will focusing on especially T cells. And they will modify these T cells and these T cells, they will be acting as strong cancer fighter cells. They are called as CAR T cells. These CAR T cells, they are special type of cells and they have the primary function. So, primary function is cytotoxic, which means it will kill other cells. 
So now let us see how this process of this scar tick therapy which works. So first of all, we will be removing the blood. Okay, from vein we will be removing the blood of the so and so patient. So in this blood we will be having these T cells, right? So here we are making this scar T cells in the lab. So we are inserting the gene, okay, for this T cell. And after that here we will be going for generation of proteins by using that. And now we are going this uh, CAR T cells into millions and that will be directly infused into this so and so patient body. And this CAR T cells now present in the patient blood that will be binding to the cancer cells and they will be killing this cancer cells finally. So this is this technology called as CAR T cell therapy. Okay, first drawing of blood and identifying this T cells and modifying the T cells and we are multiplying them in the laboratory and that will be injected into parents, uh, patient's blood. So this is the methodology of this CAR T technology. So what is the significance? So if you say significance, so now patients they can get the treatment in India itself because here people who are having the limited resources and people who are having the limited access to the life saving drugs then they can use this therapy. And this one is CAR T cell therapy can cost around 3 to 4 crores per patient. But now if you are using this uh, CAR 19 then we can get this treatment within 30 to 40 lakhs per patient. Okay and we can decrease the cost barrier and one more thing here is so it is also one technical achievement okay because India will be put in some selective countries that have this CAR T therapy so that we can attract medical tourism as well okay so this is about this topic and now let us see next topic it is about national level monitors so title says center to depute national level monitors to oversee this livestock schemes in India. So in this context, yes, you have to know about which are the schemes which are focusing on this livestock in India. Okay, so what is the context? Why it is in news? So your center decided to deploy national level monitors to oversee implementation of livestock schemes. To see the implementation of this livestock schemes, yes, here national level monitors they had been going to be dis, uh, deployed by the central government. So if you see details it says that here national level monitors so they will be like third party. They will be like third party independent monitors and they include individuals institutions which are present there and actually here the important objective of this it is to know whether the programs of ministry they are implemented according to the guidelines prescribed or not so talking about this functioning of this um, committee so it will determine villagers it is determine the villagers view on programs and they will also consider suggestions for improvement and they will be focusing on selection of beneficiaries under program okay and they want to be transparent unbiased and fair so it will also determine the incentives to privates, technicians, farmers. They have been distributed as envisaged under the scheme. Okay, and they will be also seeing like whether they are getting the data on vaccination, on disease monitoring, artificial insemination, etc. or not on real-time basis. And if you're talking about this livestock sector in India. So livestock sector plays a very important role in our Indian economy. So this livestock sector contributes around 4.90% of total gross value added. Right and here this dairy is one of the single largest agricultural community and it contributes about 5% of uh, economy, national economy. India ranked first in the milk production which is around 23% of global milk production but I want to share one thing so I am staying in Hyderabad I am saying I am staying in Hyderabad so I want milk daily I will drink like one glass of milk so if I go to my village there I will be getting the fresh milk 
but here in Hyderabad, so if I'm boiling the milk, so I will not get in the aroma of the fresh milk. So even though I'm paying like 8, 90 rupees per liter for milk, with that too, they are saying that there will be fresh milk and there will be no removal of fat and there will be no adding of water, etc. But I will be not getting the fresh aroma of milk. So this is a tragedy, I don't know why. So even if I'm not mixing the one glass of water also, it will be like watery, watery milk. Okay. So here India is ranking the first in milk production, but here in cities we are not getting the pure form of milk and lot of adulterated milk is seen and there are a lot of rackets that had been exposed recently, okay. They are using urea, they are using shampoo and they are using oil for the production of milk, right. So this is about this topic and you have to see the schemes which are came up by the government regarding this livestock development. That is Rashtriya Gokul Mission, National Livestock Mission, Livestock Health and Disease Control, National Program for Dairy Development, National Animal Disease Control Program. So these are the livestock schemes by government. And next topic is Supreme Court seeks data on donations through electoral bond reserves verdict on scheme. So here you have to know about what is this electoral bond scheme and you have to know some important details. So if you see the context, it says that Supreme Court gave Election Commission of India two weeks of time to produce updated data regarding who are the people, who are the individuals they donated the donations to these political parties under this electoral bond scheme. So what are these electoral bonds? So electoral bonds, they are interest-free bearer bonds or money instruments. And these instruments, they are like the promissory notes and they can buy them and they can give them to the political parties. So who can purchase them like companies, like individuals, okay. So they have to get this uh, bonds from authorized SBI banks only. And these bonds are sold in multiples of 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh, 10 lakh and 1 crore rupees. So they can be purchased through KYC complaint account to make donations to a political party. So there is no cap on the number of electoral bonds that a person or company can purchase. Okay. So there is no cap on the number of electoral bonds. The political parties, they have to encash them within a stipulated time. Okay. So within some time, they have to encash them or else they will be dead. So the name and other information of donor, they are not entered on the instrument. So because of this, these electoral bonds they are anonymous so we are not going to get the details of person or individual or any organization which is buying that electoral bond so this electoral bond scheme came up by our government in year okay in year 2017-16 so this is passed as a finance act or money bill so whenever any bill which is passed as a money bill so we can bypass Rajya Sabha because Rajya Sabha having a very minimal role in this money bill. So if a political party is ruling, okay, if it want to pass a bill, so it is diverting Rajya Sabha by introducing that so and so bill as money bill, even GST passed as a money bill. And if you see here, these acts which mainly includes Representation of People's Act, Companies Act, Income Tax Act, FCRA Act, so these have been amendments. So these are the four amendments which made to this act and finally we came up with this electoral bond scheme. And what are the challenges of this scheme? The first one is it violates right to information because here under this article 191 subclass A which says that yes it is a right of citizens to know about who are the donors to this political parties. So here it is infringing this article 19 subclass 1A. It also enables backdoor lobbying, quid pro quo. That is nothing but here the corporations, they are diverting this black money to this electoral funding. Okay, so that here they are favoring the political party. 
and there is lack of political funding because there is anonymity there is no displaying of information of individuals or corporations who are getting this electoral bonds and it is not entirely anonymous and usage for any other purpose other than election so if i'm if i'm having a political party if i'm getting the donations so i may not use that money for the election purpose but i can use it for another purpose so there is no authority which is having an eye on me on the spending of these donations and even it will also promotes corruption so it is a scheme to protect criminals from being prosecuted under prevention of corruption act and as well as prevention of money laundering act so because of this here these people they are protecting from the punishments okay so these are the some important things that you have to remember and next topic it is about kerala government moves supreme court against governor over pending bills so this is a thing and this is a problem in states of tamil nadu and kerala and here we have to see what are the constitutional provisions and what are the dis uh, as well as the discretionary powers of kerala so context says that the kerala government has sought a declaration from the supreme court that governor failed to exercise his constitutional powers and duties because he is holding the bills that bills are not getting assent okay for a long and indefinite period so because of this here kerala government came with a declaration from supreme court so here you have to know about constitutional discretion or discretionary powers so the reservation of a bill for the consideration of president that is article 200 article 200 talks about reservation of a bill for consideration of the president and there are some recommendations for imposition of president's rule that comes in article 356 of indian constitution and it will also focus on exercising its functions as administrator of an adjoining union territory and as well as it is focusing on even determining the amount of payable by government of assam meghalaya tripura mizoram that is amt so which comes under schedule 6 of indian constitution okay so that's it and if you see can governor can withhold the assent or not yes while a plain reading of article 200 So this article 200 which suggests that governor he can withhold his assent okay he can do that only on advice of council of minister but this has been violated and this one is the constitution provides that governor can exercise his executive powers only on advice of council of ministers under this article 154 So here you have to remember these two articles here, Article two hundred and Article one fifty four. And next one is the larger question is like why governor should be allowed to withhold assent when bill is passed by the assembly. Okay, and I want to give you one prelims question, so please answer this question. And this question already appeared in twenty fourteen. That is which of the following are the discretionary powers? So in this way, you can expect question in this year prelims also because of issue regarding this Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So first one is sending a report to President of India for imposing President's rule. Next one is appointing ministers, reserving certain bills passed by state legislature for consideration of President of India, and making the rules to conduct the business of the state government. Okay, so please let me know which are the correct. statements under this discretionary powers of kerala so i request you to open your lakshmi kant book and see this chapter of governor and especially you have to focus on discretionary powers is that clear and now let us move on so next topic it is about biosphere reserves and this topic is important from your environment and ecology which comes in a gs paper 3 So, if you see, what is this biosphere reserve? Biosphere reserve is nothing but they are the designated areas that combine conservation of biological diversity, and even we are focusing on sustainable development. 
So two things we are focusing that is conservation of biological diversity and sustainable developments. And these areas they are serving as living laboratories where efforts are made to balance the needs of nature and human community. And they typically consist of three interlinked zones. So we have core zone, we have buffer zone, okay, we have core, okay, we have buffer and we have transition zone. So in the core zone, there will be strict conservation activities will be done and in the buffer zone control activities and the transition zone, yes, human settlements will be allowed. So what is the importance here? So we can focus on conservation, okay, we can preserve biodiversity and especially we will be focusing on protecting of some endangered species and conserving of unique ecosystems. And we can do some research, scientific research on ecological studies and monitoring of ecosystem dynamics. So that can be done. And we can also focus on education as well. Like how can we promote environmental education? So how can we promote awareness and capacity building measures? And we can even focus on sustainable development. Like how can we integrate conservation, development, and sustainable livelihoods and community engagement. So in all these things, it is very helpful. And actually there are three zones in this biosphere reserve, right? So first one is core area. So in this core area, we have focusing on especially genetic diversity preservation. So we can focus on endangered species, landscape protection, etc. And the buffer zone, so it is an area. So here we have, here we have core area. Like so around this core area, so we have some important activities that can be done, right? So that is called as buffer zone. So in this buffer zone, what are the activities that can be done? Like we can go for scientific research, monitoring, training, education efforts, and we'll be having this transition area. Okay, so this area which is situated periphery and there we can focus on even human settlements, human development, economic activities that can be done. Okay, so that's all. So these are the important topics that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. And now I want to make a small announcement. So we are going to start the new batch of mains answer writing practice from November 6th. So this course is absolutely beneficial for the students who are facing problem in answer writing. So if you're having a problem with answer writing skills, so if you're having too much of content or if you're having less content, or else if you are facing problem like understanding the question, understanding the demand of question. So if you are having the problem with handwriting speed and if you want a, a better uh, and uh, if you want a mentor to evaluate your answer. So for all these things, so this course is absolutely beneficial. That is daily mains answer writing course. So try to join this course. It is absolutely, absolutely beneficial for the beginners and as well as the students who already started their preparation. They gave the attempts. So here in this course, we are covering entire your GS 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we will provide a modal answer for each and every question. On Sundays, you will be having essays and case studies and there will be detailed evaluation of your answer and there will be doubt clearing sessions and live essay writing and case study sessions on every Sunday at 7 p.m. That sessions will be at most useful for the students and a lot of students are benefiting from that and they are improving a lot. So students who are part of this main answer writing course, so let me know your, uh, okay, your response in the comment box so that it will be helpful for other students also. Okay, so please do comment. Okay, so this is about this daily mains answer writing course and the new batch is going to start it from 6th November and the cost of this course is 8,200 rupees. So even if you can't pay this amount in one go, you can pay in two installments. So installment facility is also available. Okay. So this is about this course. I hope you will be joining and the classes will be taken by me so that you can raise your voice and you can talk to me directly in that live classes on every Sunday. Okay. So this is an opportunity that you can get if you join this course. And many students are asking me like where can I get this notes part. So here this is the notes. Okay. You can join this telegram channel. One minute, it's not opening. So you can join the telegram channel. Okay, this is telegram channel, Rathod's IS classes. There we will be posting this uh, notes so that you can easily download there. 
and this is Rathod's Eyes Academy YouTube channel. So you have to subscribe to this channel so that you will be getting updates regarding the classes. And next one is this is our website Rathod's Eyes Academy. So here first you have to do login or register. So if you are visiting to our website for the first time, you have to click on do not have account and first you have to register. So after registering, you have to use your ID and password and later on you can click on this course list. Okay, these are the courses that we are offering in the Stratos IS. So if you want to watch the demo videos, you can click on play course so that you can watch three videos in each and every module without paying a single penny. And here you can see this is our daily main translating course. Okay, so you can join here. And one more thing here is we are also launching online ethics course. So it will be like 50 hours there each and every topic in your syllabus is discussed and special focus on case studies and examples. And even there will be daily one main question will be given on that day's topic. Okay, that will be at most useful to so try to join that course as well. Okay, the cost of that course is 4,500 rupees only. Okay, and that is going to be started from November 15 onwards. And we are also going to start this Prelims Booster course that will be around the second week of November and we will be letting you know the details regarding that okay also soon. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So if you like the class, so hit the like button and share this class to your friends as well. And one more thing here is don't forget to subscribe to this Rathod Science Academy. Thank you so much for watching.